Hey, hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me on this Monday, June 27th, 2022, about 4.15 p.m. Eastern time as I speak. Thank you, folks, again, for that continue to join me as we continue to grow together, learn together, learn more about who our daddy is. That way we can learn more about who we are, the things we can do, and who we are, and whose we are, all that good stuff. And it all comes from the Word of God, folks. So thank you all again. Uh, today's title is Mysterious Ways, and when I saw that title, I had to instantly go back old school to Mystery Machines, Scooby-Doo and the gang. Guys, I don't know if that's going <laughs> to have anything to do with today's devotional or not. That's just, bam, that's the first thought that came on my mind, so I kind of, I like the background there with Shaggy and Scooby and the old Mystery Machine, but reminiscing a little bit, I guess, but that's all, I get it, that's all earthly, I understand, but it's okay to have a smile every now and then. Um, anyway, Mysterious Ways and our study scriptures, my favorite, Romans chapter 8. Uh, it's, it's saying Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 39. Guys, take the time, just take a few extra minutes and just read all of Romans chapter 8. I'll, I'll put the verses in the uh, description of what the author has here for the, the Romans 8, 28. You know, it talks about, we know that all, God works all things for good. Doesn't, doesn't say he causes all things, he works all things for good. And then you get towards the end of Roman 8, it just describes that nothing will ever separate us from God's love. But it starts off with there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So I highly encourage you, that's all I can do, is just to read all of Romans 8, find a quiet time, that take about not even probably four minutes to read that entire chapter and uh, read it slow, get along with the Lord. And that's, that's powerful. But let me keep going here. I just get excited when I see Romans chapter 8, in case you can't tell. But our studies, our lead off first, I'm sorry, our lead off first is out of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11, and the word of God says, in him we were also chosen, we were chosen in him, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. That ties in with Romans 8, guys. I'll read that again, Ephesians 1, 11. In him, in Christ, we were also chosen, you and me as believers, family believers, the church, the saints, having been predestined from the beginning, according to the plan of him, Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. We said that repeatedly. It's all about God's will, not ours, folks. But just to know that he chose you to be a part of his perfect plan, that's pretty comforting to me. And our uh, devotional today is written by Dave Brandon. He goes on to write, and you know, it's just, it's Dave Brandon, is he that guy that throws those names on me? I think he might be. Anyway, let's try this. Jacob DeShazer served the U.S. Army Air Corps in World War II as a bombardier in the squadron of General Jimmy Doolittle. While participating in Doolittle's raid on Tokyo in 1942, the Shazer and his crew ran out of fuel and bailed out over China. Uh -oh. Yeah, there you go, right in the background. Uh -oh. <laughs> so I'm sorry, guys, it's Monday. He was taken to a Japanese prison camp where he trusted Jesus as his savior. Smart choice. After his release, he became a missionary to Japan. Woo. One day, DeShazer handed a tract with his story in it to a man named, oh boy, Mitsuao Fukita, Fukita, Fukita. I don't know, guys. Um, he didn't know what Mitsuo was on his way. He didn't know that Mitsuo was on his way to a trial for his wartime role as a commander of Japanese forces that attacked Pearl Harbor. Fukita read the pamphlet, and got a Bible. Hallelujah. He soon became a Christian and an evangelist to his people. Hmm. Eventually, DeShazer and Fuchita, Fuka, yeah, him, these two guys, they eventually met again and became friends. It's amazing how God can take two men who were mortal enemies. <laughs> Holy Spirit, I love you. Bring them together and lead them to himself. Nothing, not even a world war, can stop God from working everything in conformity 
with the purpose of his will. That's Ephesians 1.11. Oh, my. This is a – I know there's another brother out there watching this video either today or tomorrow soon. He's going to know exactly where I'm going at with this one. A mysterious way, you talking about these two guys who were on opposite fighting teams. I mean, a physical war, a physical battle, you know, uh, the U.S. against China, Japan, or whoever it was uh, over in Tokyo it went down. Going down in enemy territory, hostile territory, and we've said repeatedly, you know, we wake up in enemy territory every day. But for the sake of this devotional, this guy's talking physical, worldly things that happen. And um, just for this guy trusting his life to Jesus while he was in a Japanese prison camp. And guys, I've only seen movies and heard stories about those places, and I've never seen anything pleasant. Yeah, maybe I've watched Rambo and Missing in Action too much. You know, maybe that's a little twisted. Maybe it's maybe that's sugarcoating the way it really was over there. But still, you know, this guy to trust his life to Jesus, that's the number one step, the first smart move he made, and then became a missionary to that battlefield, became a missionary to Japan. And uh, then they became friends with this guy who was on his way to trial for what his his role in the in the, the attack on Pearl Harbor. This guy, I don't know what the I hate the word religion. This guy may have been over in Japan, but just to read this pamphlet, a little track, a little two or three page paperback track, you've seen him before probably, that was enough to convert that guy to Christianity and become an evangelist to the people over in Japan. And they became best friends. I'm talking about how amazing God works in mysterious ways. You guys have heard me talking about my brother, Dave. Um, I don't know if I've, if I've said it or not before. I think I have a couple of videos. Our skin tones are different. They are not the same shade, if you understand what I'm saying. And back in the day, before he or I either one knew the Lord and surrendered our lives to Christ, he did not like people that had my tone of skin, and I did not like people that had his tone of skin. Um, and now God has taken that for his good, his purpose, his plan, his will, and has made the two of us best, best of friends. We're brothers in Christ. We're spiritual twins. We get together. We do Bible studies nonstop faithfully. We've been obedient to it. You know, uh, you couldn't you couldn't have you couldn't have paid me enough to believe that five years ago, give or take. I would have never, there's no way, there's no way I'm ever gonna be a friend with the enemy, so to speak, like the, the devotional here saying. And I think I could speak for my brother just the same that he would uh, he would highly agree with that, that there's no way he was ever gonna be friends with somebody like myself. But uh, but God, but God. So, guys, this uh, God, you know, you hear that God does work in mysterious ways. I understand that. We won't fully understand God's plan. We won't fully understand how he works, but we do know he works for the good, for the better, for his purpose, for his will, for his plan. That's all we need to know. We just need to trust God. We may not like it. It may be uncomfortable. It may hurt. It may be bumpy. We may lose some things, but in the end, the end result is going to be absolutely perfect. It's all going to make sense. And again, it's for his glory, guys. You got, you know, we got to struggle. We struggle with holding on that we want some of that glory. That's not about our glory at all. All glory goes to God because he's the only one worthy of any glory. We're just blessed, as our lead off verse here says, to be predestined, chosen from the beginning, to be a part of the perfect plan. You guys hear me talk about sports all the time. Just imagine, okay, I'll, I'll go with football because that's the only thing I can really speak on. Imagine being picked for the Pro Bowl. You know, it's the best of the best every year at the end of the season. The AFC and AFC, a couple players from each team. Some, some teams don't have anybody that goes. They're just that bad. But it's the best of the best that get chosen to put, compete in this event, although they don't really play anymore. But you know what I'm saying. That is such an honor and a privilege to be a part of that team. But then take it to God's team. I'm called God's team, the family of believers, the church, the body of Christ that you were chosen from the beginning to be on this winning team, guys. That's just something to embrace, to be thankful for, grateful for, or just to give God praise every single day you wake up with a breath in your lungs and a beat in your heart that he's got still got a plan for you. He's not done with you yet. It's not time to sit the bench. It's not time to go home. So, guys, this is just beautiful. God, God is awesome. I, I really wouldn't say he works in mysterious ways. I understand that. I really do. We'll never understand his ways fully, I don't believe. There's some scriptures in there that would uh, back that up and defend it but um, or uh, go against it. But that might be for another time. So till today on this Monday, the 27th, God bless you guys for joining me. 
Enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, we'll see what the Lord has to say tomorrow. I love you guys.